Hey guys, I'm Mountain Fiber, and today I'll be showing you how I made an Edwardian style work apron. I was inspired by the less frilly, more practical aprons worn by some female servants during the early 1900s, including laundresses and cooks. This apron is intended to be an ultra practical item in my own wardrobe as well, and get a lot of use in the kitchen and garden, so I decided to machine stitch the entire thing. Although I do admit, at several points, I was sorely tempted to bring out my needle and thread. The whole project came together on a whim, and took about a day and a half to construct. I didn't have a pattern, only a vague idea based on some primary sources of what I wanted the apron to look like. For the material, I used extra wide cotton mattress sticking. To start, I cut three strips along the selvage of my fabric, three inches wide, to form the straps. Then. I tore an approximately 11 inch long section on the cross grain, which would make up the bib of the apron. I ran one line of long gathering stitches along one edge of the bib fabric to create that puffy gathered effect found in a lot of the original aprons. I then held it up to myself to get an idea of how wide the fabric should be for the bib and cut that out. Then I ran another line of gathering stitches along the top edge of the skirt and gathered that down to 26 inches. I folded in one raw edge for each of the two shoulder straps and ironed it in place, then top stitched it. To attach the straps to the bib, I pinned the raw edges right sides together along the long sides of the bib. I sewed them together, trimmed the seam allowance, folded it inwards, ironed it in place, and then top stitched it. And then I repeated the process on the other side. This is probably not how the straps of the original aprons I saw would have been constructed. I believe those were folded double, with the raw edge of the bib sandwiched between the two layers of the strap fabric and then top stitched. I would have liked to do the straps that way, but since I had a limited amount of fabric, I decided to improvise instead. At some point in there, I guess I finished the bib with a strip cut off from one of the shoulder strap pieces, which I then sewed into place along the top of the bib, but I didn't film that process. After attaching the straps and the top piece, I again folded over one of the raw edges to encase the other and ironed it down, this time all the way up the unfinished edge of each of the shoulder straps. I top stitched to finish the seam and then top stitched the rest of the shoulder strap so that both edges were finished. My life would have been a lot easier if I had decided to sew on the wrong side of the fabric so I could actually see what I was doing, but no. Next, following vaguely the waistband instructions in authentic Victorian dressmaking techniques, I pinned the gathered skirt to the waistband strips right sides together, using pins to line up the center point of each piece. I ended up using four pins and dividing the skirt and waistband into quarters, trying to ensure there was an equal amount of fabric in each and that the gathers were evenly spaced. Then I sewed the skirt to the waistband. Once that was finished, I sewed the bib to the waistband, making sure the pieces were centered and the gathers were symmetrical. Next, I folded over the raw edges on either side of the skirt, 
I ironed them in place and top stitched them. Meanwhile, a quick reminder that Black Lives Matter. To cover these raw edges from the gathered skirt and gathered top, I'm covering them with another strip which will also help reinforce the uh, waistband in this section. So right now I'm just pinning it, um, I guess, right and wrong side together. And then I'm going to sew that and then I'm going to flip it over and then I guess I'm going to top stitch. After fastening down the interior waistband strip, I top stitched a 3 inch hem at the bottom of the skirt. Don't get too attached to it though, since it's going to get ripped out and redone before the end of this video. I decided to line the waistband ties completely in order to reinforce them, but since I no longer had any fabric left, where the stripes were running parallel with the edges of the straps, I had to cut the lining out of fabric with the stripes were going perpendicular. This is also when I was most tempted to do some more hand sewing. If I had more time and didn't anticipate needing to throw this into the washer and dryer frequently, I would have whip stitched the bottom of the waistband lining down over the gathered edge by hand. Instead, I top stitched the lining by machine. Then I tried on the apron, pinned the straps into place across my back, and sewed them several times over for strength. And here's the finished apron. except I forgot to make pockets. I unpicked the hem and cut about 10 inches off the bottom of the skirt to get enough fabric to make pockets. Really, just one pocket. And then I rehemmed the apron. I liked the original length, but it was significantly longer than most of my dresses, so in the end I think it was a good thing that I was forced to shorten it, and I like that it's more in line with the 19-teens and 20s style aprons. As one side of the pocket, I used the finished edge which I had sewn up as part of the skirt. I then finished the rest of the edges of the pocket the same way, by folding over, ironing, and then top stitching, with a deeper hem at the top opening. I stitched the pocket in place, reinforcing the corners where I changed direction. I'll probably add another pocket later on if I feel like I need one. But for now, I'm happy with just one. And here, finally, is the finished apron in an updated World War I era length. Now the only thing left to do is put it to use. <laughs>